you can start okay. good evening to one and all today's my lecture topic is multi specialist hospital in today uh, multi specialist hospital what is first of all uh, what is multi specialist hospital a multi specialist hospital is one of that uh, has facility for elements and uh, all diseases with expert teams and doctors and specialists the patient uh, the patient are so uh, impressible taken of uh, taken care with uh, air conditioned rooms and canteens inside the personalized care hospitals and the uh, admittments rooms admittments uh, could include uh, these but not limited to these it has uh, full of carefully hospitals and big responsibilities uh, have them for their patients the doctors and nurses take uh, take care uh, of that patient very good in the uh, in their hospitals such hospitals uh, afterward advanced to be known as the multi specialist hospital uh, in that uh, give the importance of uh, to every disease and elements there are various types of hospitals and healthcare uh, center all around us within increase in cases and uh, various elements we get in the amendments and under the in same roof in uh, multi specialist hospitals it is easy to uh, get treatment uh, for uh, various uh, diseases and elements with it without having to travel uh, into the different places uh, and uh, ho- hospitals it has saves a lots of times and uh, money with a lot of other efforts and resources uh, as like to traveling by the ambulance at, uh, at long distance long distance and a lot of money uh, with uh, save times and uh, without lot of resources the latest technologies are present in multi specialist hospital latest technologies are available for the uh, for the procedures and treatments managed by the managed by managed by the best doctors and uh, surgeons physicians and doctors Uh, there is a fully equipment diagnostic centers opd and ambulance uh, critical cares icu and other etc it has been 24 into 7 emergency cases service and lastly uh, in in the multi specialist hospital in multi specialist hospital there are a lack of uh, present of money uh, we have to give it is not comparable to uh, all peoples and lastly i conclude that Uh, as humans we all wish to live a healthy and disease free life but this is not practical always thank you okay good jay multi specialty hospital these are very advanced uh, hospitals today we see how from orthodox way of uh, medical services earlier times it was small clinics thereafter laboratories were separate and for everything you used to visit different area different doctors now under one roof we have all the facilities it has got uh, positive side also and negative side also positive side is you get treated under one roof for all kinds of things all tests done every doctor is available because lot of doctors are visiting doctors there so patient is cured at one place gets every facility at one place but the another dimension is the business angle the cost angle so there are different views on it but the better thing is that human beings are getting better services when it comes to the health related issues so maybe government guidelines in this lecture topic or such kind of nature if you are talking you can add the dimensions of your views how government guidelines can help to regulate undue advantage undue cost in such kind of services because government is alert but a developing nation has got its own pace of getting rules and regulations today maybe uh, these multi specialty hospitals are not having adequate watchdog mechanism and the third angle is insurance which is 
a very very uh, funny angle where different types of patients are in the same hospital one is getting treated from the cashless insurance facility the same patient cannot be compared with the patient who is not having that facility or um, not having the insurance cover so how to compare uh, both the costs because one is not bothered about what kind of treatment is being done what kind of tests are being ordered whether it is required or not required let insurance company uh, deal with that another is bothered about every test ordered every extra thing told so these two scenario visible in such kind of hospitals okay there are many issues we can discuss under this but the bottom line is a patient in need of health related treatment will get best of the services that is a good aspect okay good jay who is now next volunteer pawan okay jay keep time Pawan ready? Introduction to proverb: Fear and terror in the heart of people. Terrorists usually attack places like airports, hotels, or religious places. these places are attacked as there are more civilians terrorism has caused a lot of destruction all around the world terrorism has destroyed the peace of many families many soldiers have sacrificed their lives during terrorist attacks terrorism is of four types criminal terrorism religious terrorism decent terrorism and state sponsored terrorism terrorist groups like isis and isi usually brainwash young boys to sacrifice their lives in the name of religion or an idea the horrifying act of terrorism was the attack on the twin trading towers in new york on september 11 2001 the main aim of terrorist is to destroy world peace and hurt people the go- the global death toll due to terrorism is between 8000 to 10000 people in the least decade the most horrifying act of terrorism that happened in india was the attack on the taj hotel on 26 november 2050 people were killed with over 300 people in injured during that attack thank you okay pawan your topic was terrorism isn't it yes sir okay and uh, you tried to cover it well initial part i missed because i think there is some issue technical issue i was not able to hear audio okay terrorism is actually such a topic which last 30 years has been covered from different dimensions now it has come to a different level like advanced level cyber terrorism earlier it used to be just some kind of uh, human who were indoctrinated got the weapons in their hand and they used to trouble or operate against the local government state government or central government and especially security agencies and all over world this got spread every country is actually facing the issue of terrorism and it has got serious ramifications but until 2001 when the twin tower what pawan was highlighting got uh, targeted 911 happened the powerful country that is us got the message and then how world can operate against terrorism or can come together 
the message started spreading but honestly speaking today also world is not together when it comes to handle this serious issue all over world every country who wants to be um, going for development want to establish peace and don't want to face this menace that is one side but nobody is effectively working on it there are some vested interest every country has got its own problems they want to address this issue but not ready to handle it well cooperate it well okay terrorism uh, we were talking of uh, from the ssb point of view or many exams this is a very important uh, topic you should always be ready to speak on uh, group discussions or even in interview okay good pawan uh, flow will increase as you practice and maintain the uh, data in your diaries whatever you spoke today and thereafter build upon it not that once you spoken on such topic next time it should be more quality more statistics more examples and different perspective okay who is next okay sir next volunteer krishiv sir i am ready prachit is ready okay pavan keep time prachit yes. okay sir yes sir uh, wait a minute okay now you can start uh, jai hind everyone today's my lecture topic is travel uh, travel is the movement of people between distant uh, distant geographical locations um, movement of people between uh, between the traveling can be done by food by sea uh, train bus Uh, uh, etc. With your uh, luggage, with your luggage, and you feel that uh, travel include a uh, only short stays between successive movements, as as is in case of uh, as in the case of a tourism. The travel for duration, hotel reservations, vacation, vacationing, research. etc gathering formation gathering the information with people like others religious pilgrims german travel for for awareness avoiding uh, stress and many more uh, uh, travel uh, travel is offer as a hardship and challenges however it Uh, is the economic and the safety to our common type of travel uh, tra- traveling may be traveling in local or regional uh, national or international in in uh, in other countries uh, non uh, non local internal travel uh, may require a uh, passports and uh, visa also may require traveling may uh, way of offer provide a uh, more co- travel passengers on a, on a bit of the view is more beautiful the the origin of world travel is mostly like lost in the sea it is origin it is originated the uh, old range there are many traveling and for temples music travel to historical in, information historical place and their as the as as the as the uh, that place and how they did a uh, kingdom that place uh, uh, okay prachiti travel when you say just a travel word that is very open ended one can say uh, tourism uh, how it has come up from the country point of view or region point of view from the individual point of view if you see since yes, times immemorial in the history also those who moved out and 
reached out to different uh, parts of the world they brought out something new comparative analysis and they were the people who acquired new knowledge and transferred it to different parts similar thing in today's world when you come out of your local zone and travel what are the benefits you get to know many new things by sitting at one corner of the world it is not easy to understand or feel about what is the culture in other areas what kind of climate is there today technology is enabling us to see it on youtube or through google we can read it but unless and until you experience it it is a different game together suppose you read something about shimla or ladakh or northeast but once you go there it is different similar thing is about europe or any other country about deserts this is how you have to see that travel will give you more knowledge more experience and you will be having better uh, authority to speak on whether it is about any uh, culture or uh, habits climate the area per se and a person who wants to grow must travel otherwise sitting at one corner of the world whole life is not really an ideal life so when you speak in ssb on such topics open up your minds open up your feelings you can express innovative way okay okay good prachiti who is next next uh, rugved or krishi yes sir thank you sir i am rugved ready prachiti keep time yes sir okay now yeah in uh, myself rugved ritesh kulkarni and my topic is cpc that is a china pakistan economic corridor so what is cpc cpc is a 3000 km long route of infra infrastructure projects connecting china's northwest jinjiang uyghur autonomous region and the gwadar port in the western province of baluchistan in pakistan it is a bilateral project between pakistan and china intended to promote connectivity across pakistan with a network of highways railways and pipelines accompanied by energy industrial and other infrastructure development projects it will pave the way for china to access the middle east and african africa from gwadar port enabling china to access the indian ocean so cpc is a part of belt and road initiative launched by bri in 2013 aims to link southeast asia central asia and gulf region so what are the implications of cpc uh, for india that is india's sovereignty india has continuously opposed the project since it passes through the pakistan occupied kashmir territory of gilgit baltistan a claim opposed by pakistan the corridor is also perceived to be an alternative economic road link for the kashmir valley lying on the indian side of the border there have been calls by local business and political leaders to declare kashmir on both sides of the line of control a special economic zone so second is chinese control over trade via sea major us ports on the east coast depend on the panama canal to trade with china once cpc becomes fully functional china will be in a position to offer a shorter and more economical trade route to most north and latin american enterprises this will give china the power to di dictate the terms by which the international movement of goods will take place now chinese stirring string of pearls china has been increasing its presence in the indian ocean with the string of pearls ambition string of pearls uh, connects with an existing presence in chittagong port bangladesh hammam tota port sri lanka and port sudan in sudan also Last connects maldives yeah and sintilis so uh, the what should be the aim of india the way forward 
so india should leverage its strategic location and further work with like minded countries to participate in multilateral initiatives like asia africa growth corridor is an india japan economic cooperation agreement and also the blue dot network which is being promoted by the usa so it will be the great challenge for the india to forward in the uh, uh, matter of trade thank you okay good uh, rugvet um, quality points you were speaking china pakistan economic corridor both the countries wants to connect to each other but at what cost at the cost of india's interest india's sovereignty they are challenging us through this corridor it is very uh, misadventure from their side and it is testing our nerves and that's why probably galwan has galwan incident has happened the other day we were speaking because ultimately it is going through pakistan occupied kashmir which is as such we always claimed that it is illegally occupied by pakistan and pakistan further illegally handed over some part of it that is akshay chain to china this is something which is not in our interest and we always have been opposing it and we will uphold our territorial integrity and will challenge it challenge it so cpec will not stand on ground if they try it and push one day it will be again uh, challenged by india and otherwise today it is cpc tomorrow it is something else and we will be just a spectator and we will lose our strategic uh, interest because that is a strategic loss and uh, moral victory for them our adversaries and we cannot sustain with such kind of background so it is very important we have to object it somehow it should fail by hook or crook india is trying and will do whatever uh power is required whatever push is required to challenge it even chinese workers facing problem in china pakistan these all issues because there are many things china has realized that operating in pakistan is not easy they have suffered both losses economic losses and human losses so as such this project is not going to be sustaining for the long future okay who is next krishiv we want to hear now yes sir okay uh, rugvet keep time okay sir wait a second you can start good evening to one and all i will be speaking about ram mandir ayodhya the ayodhya dispute of ram mandir stretches back more than a century is one of india's thorniest court cases and goes to the heart of its identity politics the matter is the belief among sections of hindus that the babri masjid named after the mughal emperor babar was built in ayodhya after destroying a ram temple that marked in the birthplace of the deity the muslim section however contended that the mosque was constructed in 1528 by mir baqi a commander of a commander of babar's army without demolishing any place of worship and since since the land rights had not been transferred to any other party the space was rightfully theirs the matter first went to the court as far back as 1885 mahant raghubar das filed a suit for permission to build a temple outside the mosque but was rejected by the court a large crowd of hindus entered the premises on the night of december 22 to 23 1949 and planted idols of lord ram under the central dome in 1950 gopal singh visharad a local devotee filed a suit as asserting his right to worship at the birthplace of lord ram an interim order was passed in his favor against the removal of idols Muslim parties entered the picture in December 1961 when the Uttar Pradesh Central Sunni Waqf Board filed a suit asserting that the mosque was a public waqf for over 400 years and seeking that the premises including the mosque and a public Muslim graveyard in the vicinity to be handed over to it 
After the Ram Janmabhoomi movement spreaded by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, supported by the BJP, gathered momentum in the late 1980s, and a faith suit was filed by DT itself as Ram Lalla, the presiding deity. On February 1st, 1986, a local court ordered that the locks be opened for Hindu worshippers. This order gave a big push. The BJP and Vishwa Hindu Parishad thereafter started mobilizing people all over the country. And report and repeatedly fix dates for marching on the disputed site. A belligerent onslaught on a heavily barricaded Ayodhya town resulted in the police opening fire on Kar Sevaks in 1990. The incident led to the BJP withdrawing support to the VP Singh government. BJP leader Lal Krishna Advani led a rat yatra across several states, leaving a trail of communal violence. Ultimately, the aggressive mobilization resulted in the destruction of Masjid on December 6, 1992, despite the assurance given by the BJP government of Kalyan Singh. And finally, in 2019, the Supreme Court gave gave its verdict in the favor of Ram Lalla, and the Ram Mandir was successfully established on the land. Thank you. okay good uh, krishi uh, good flow very articulately confined within 3 minutes a long history of uh, ayodhya very sensitive issue because it is at the heart of india's culture india being a secular country but it cannot be denied that majority is hindu and something which as an injustice in the history which has happened and uh, just because we are a secular country we cannot uh, keep accepting that now hindus cannot dominate for old injustice it was not about dominating also it was something to recorrect or get the right back because there was a challenge that it is now a masjid how it can be removed but then a very very layman's logic that it the masjid was built upon a temple first injustice happened there let recorrect it or justify it by removing it and get the original whatever was there at place but unnecessarily because of uh, politics it was about politics which got it delayed otherwise it was a simple issue had it been uh, in a social justice from the religious angle also it was a straight case it got complicated because of indian politics and vote bank otherwise even a normal person will understand like it happens between two farmers